Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, it's time to take a look at Pop! OS 2204, which was released on April 25th. And I always get very excited to review a new release of Pop! OS because it's my daily driver distro. I literally run it on everything. I just love the custom features such as auto tiling, all the desktop integration features, the performance tweaks, the attention to detail. Pop! OS has been a great experience for me, so good in fact, that I've actually stopped distro hopping. Now, Pop! OS 2204 is based on Ubuntu 2204. Ubuntu serves as the foundation of Pop! OS, and unfortunately, in a recent review of Ubuntu 2204, I found that it wasn't really a great release in my opinion. It's had no shortage of controversy, considering that snap packages are making the rounds yet again, and this time Firefox has been moved to a snap package, which makes it launch a lot slower. But that's not even the worst thing. Ubuntu suffers from Franken GNOME this time around, which means that its implementation of GNOME was a complete train wreck. Now, thankfully, with Pop! OS 2204, it doesn't actually share the same weaknesses as Ubuntu itself. And due to that, I recommend that you skip Ubuntu this time around on the desktop, because Pop! OS is definitely the way to go. So you might be wondering then, why do I think that Pop! OS is the way to go this time around? Well, let's dive into the review and I'll tell you all about it. And as usual, what I'll do to get this review started is talk about the installation process. And the installation process this time around with Pop! OS 2204 remains mostly the same as the previous release, at the very least, there hasn't been any new features added to the installer that I've noticed personally. Now, the installer is definitely effective, and I've never had any functional problems with it. In the new release of Pop! OS, the distro installs fast and it gets you on your way. However, I really do think it would be nice if they added additional customization options to the installer. For example, for some reason that I just simply can't understand, the Pop! OS installer doesn't give you the option to set the host name of your device during installation. And I can't think of any other distribution of Linux that doesn't allow you to customize this during the installation process, but in Pop! OS, that's just not something that you can do. To be fair though, you can always set the hostname later on, but by then, the default hostname would have already showed up in your DHCP lease table, and that can make things a bit confusing if you're setting up multiple Pop! installations all at once. Also, I would really like to see some options for advanced users as well, and one example of that is LVM. It would make me very happy if I could create a custom LVM setup in the installer, the same way I'm able to do with other distributions. But don't get me wrong though, although the Pop! OS installer is missing some features that most other distro installers have, it's quite effective and it gets the job done. So if the lack of advanced options doesn't bother you specifically, then I guess it's fine. To be fair though, the Pop! OS installer does indeed install the distribution on your device, and that's its only job. And when you think of it that way, well, mission successful. At this point in the review, I want to take a moment and talk about some of the things that sets Pop! OS apart from Ubuntu, the distro with which it shares a base. It's a common misconception that Pop! OS is just a reskin of Ubuntu, which is a statement I sometimes hear within the Linux community that has no truth whatsoever. What it does have in common with Ubuntu is the underlying package base, as well as the fact that Pop! OS uses many of the same components of the GNOME desktop. But that's pretty much where the similarities end. The developers of Pop! OS have added custom tweaks just about everywhere, to the point where Pop! OS really doesn't resemble Ubuntu at all. The biggest difference between Pop! and Ubuntu is that Ubuntu features the GNOME desktop environment, but Pop! OS features a custom desktop implementation called Cosmic. The Cosmic desktop itself utilizes a number of GNOME components right now, but it's actually in a transitionary stage as System76, the developers of Pop! OS, continue to develop a Rust-based replacement. But even though the next generation of the Cosmic Desktop hasn't been released as of yet, what we have today still offers quite a few custom features that you won't find anywhere else. For example, my favorite feature of the Cosmic Desktop is Auto Tiling, which you can easily enable by clicking the icon at the upper right corner of the screen. And what Auto Tiling does for us is that it helps make sure that there's no wasted screen real estate, and it works especially well on ultra-wide displays. Personally, I can't imagine using a computer without this feature at this point. Auto tiling is awesome. In addition, Cosmic features a custom app launcher as well as a tweaked workspace manager. There's actually way more unique about Pop! OS than that. 
But rather than spending another 15 minutes or so going over every single detail, I recommend checking out Pop! OS for yourself. So, what's new with Pop! OS this time around? What new features can you expect in Pop! OS 2204? Normally, that's a fairly straightforward question to answer when I do a distro review, but when it comes to Pop! OS, things aren't quite that simple. With most releases, I could actually tell you that there's no new features whatsoever, but at the same time, I could also tell you that there are new features. Do you find that confusing? Well, if you do, I don't blame you, so I'll explain. Traditionally, when a distribution such as Ubuntu or Fedora puts out a new release, there's going to be some new features to enjoy. Each new release of a typical distro will have many improvements and tweaks that are specific to that release. However, with Pop! OS, each new release of this distro doesn't focus on new features, but instead, each new version is a new beginning of sorts. For example, let's take a look at one of the new features that's listed in the release notes as being new to this release, Automatic Updates. This new feature is built right into the Settings app, and it's what you're seeing on the screen right now. However, here's a twist. The footage that you're seeing right now is actually being taken from an installation of Pop! OS 2110, which is now the previous release. Since this feature is mentioned in the release notes for 2204, you'd be forgiven if you thought this feature was specific to 2204. However, new features in Pop! OS aren't only implemented in the new release, the developers also backport new additions to previous releases as well. This feature, like many others, is not specific to any one release. And this behavior is actually typical. New features are added after release quite often, so Pop! OS 2204, as you're seeing it today with this review, is not necessarily how this release will always be. There's no telling what new features might be added down the road, even before a full new release is even published. For that reason, reviewing a new release of Pop! OS has become a different format than I normally follow when I do distro reviews. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out some of the new features that have been mentioned in the release notes. And if you're running an older version of Pop! OS today, let me know in the comments down below which of these new features you're already seeing in your current release. And since I've already started showing you the automatic updates feature, let's go ahead and start there and talk more about that. Automatic updates when it comes to operating systems is far from a new concept. But when it comes to distributions of Linux, having updates handled automatically is more common on servers than desktops or laptops. I'm glad that Pop! OS has built this right into the Settings app, because updates aren't just important for the enterprise, you should definitely make sure you keep your laptops and desktops updated too. And, best of all, unlike in Windows, automatic updates are not forced on you at all. You could choose to enable this feature if you wish, or you could actually just ignore it. Also on this same screen, if a new release of the distribution is available, you'll be given an option to upgrade. Here's what it looks like currently on one of my other computers that I haven't upgraded yet. As you can see, it's currently showing me that the new release is available, so whenever I'm ready, I can go ahead and launch the upgrade. In fact, how about I just go ahead and do that right now? Now, I'll let that run off camera, but I love how easy and straightforward the upgrade process is in Pop! OS. I also appreciate that this was built directly into the Settings app, which I think is a very logical place for it. In addition, a whole new section was added to the Settings screen recently. The support section gives you quick access to community chat, as well as helpful documentation articles. If your computer was made by System76, then you'll have an option to submit a ticket from within this section as well if you need help. If you're installing Pop! OS on a device that's made by another vendor, then you will not see this option. Continuing, PopShop, which is the utility that gives you access to install new apps, has also seen new improvements. Instead of one big change, it's seen various improvements pretty much everywhere such as tweaks under the hood to increase performance, to make it more reliable, and also miscellaneous UI adjustments as well. Now, as good as those features are, the recently added features that I'm most excited about are completely invisible. For example, Pop! OS 2204 features version 5.16 of the Linux kernel, which is actually one major version ahead of the kernel that's used in Ubuntu. I really like the fact that a new kernel is included, because if you were to use Ubuntu, you'd be locked into kernel 5.15 until version 2204.2, or somewhere around there, which is quite a while away. That means you could benefit from the performance improvements and updated drivers that newer Linux kernels provide without having to wait. Also under the hood, we have Pipewire handling audio support, which is going to provide a better experience overall for your sound devices. But even more exciting than that, at least in my opinion, are the additional performance improvements that have been added recently. For example, a new scheduler has made its way into Pop! OS, and that actually makes your apps perform even faster, 
because it puts emphasis on whatever application is in front of you at the moment and actually gives that application higher priority. And due to this, you should notice that this release will respond even faster. Earlier, I mentioned that Pop! OS 2204 is the way to go compared to Ubuntu 2204. Throughout the review so far, I gave you plenty of reasons why that's the case. We have various tweaks, performance enhancements, and all kinds of improvements pretty much all over the place. But that's not really the main reason. In version 2204 of Ubuntu specifically, the GNOME implementation is a hodgepodge of mismatched versions that gives you a very inconsistent experience. But with Pop! OS, we have the Cosmic Desktop, which does actually use some GNOME components under the hood, but it's not technically GNOME, and it doesn't actually advertise that it is GNOME. In addition to that, we also have normal Firefox and Pop! OS instead of the Snap version that Ubuntu 22.04 has shipped. And the thing is, Snap packages could be awesome, and maybe one day they will be. But right now, they're slow to launch and not really ready for prime time. With Pop! OS, we have a native Firefox package, so you won't run into that same problem like you do in Ubuntu. So in that sense, not only is Pop! OS 2204 a great release, it's actually solving some of the downsides that Ubuntu itself is suffering from during this release cycle. So we have a new generation of desktop excellence with Pop! OS 2204. There are new features, but like I mentioned earlier, they're not specific to 2204, 2204 is a new beginning just like previous releases of the distribution. And with this release, System76 has, yet again, given us an awesome experience, something that I highly recommend, and I really want you guys to check this out because Pop! OS is great. So what do you think of Pop! OS? Let me know what you think of this review or the distribution down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.